Good evening. Good evening and welcome to Shepherd's Heart. It is a pleasure to see each one of you and to those of you who are joining us online. As always, it is a delight to worship with you regardless of where you are in time and space because we have a God who connects us no matter where we are in time and space. And we know that we go further and farther together. Um, and so it's always a joy to worship alongside other believers, other brothers and sisters in Christ. I have a couple of announcements for you this evening. Um, Holy Spirit has been speaking to us, the Shepherd's Heart Elders, about preparing the body for the coming harvest, which is the function of the fivefold ministry. Holy Spirit has also indicated to us it's time to ordain and set Alan Fess in place as a pastor in the body of Christ. We are really excited about this. We are planning to set aside our May 25th service as an ordination service. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns about Alan Fest being ordained as a pastor, um, please speak with or submit them to one of the elders um, before Monday. We, we are happy to hear what you have to say testimonies, questions. If you have concerns, please share those with us as well. Um, but please direct that to one of the elders so that whatever you have to say can be handled appropriately. <clears throat> the one hour prayer for the nation is this Thursday, April 18th at 10 a.m. on Rosecroft. <clears throat> and Passover celebrations will be held on Monday, April 22nd at 6 p.m. There are two homes that are open for additional guests for their dinner. The Douglas family has six remaining open seats, and the Sykes family has five remaining open seats. Um, so you're going to sign up in the foyer to attend one of the Passover dinners. When those seats are filled, they're, they're filled. Okay, that's what we have open and available. But of course, we would encourage you and we would love to come alongside of you if you would like to have a Passover celebration in your own home. It does not need to be open to other people. It can just be with your household or your immediate family. And so if that is something you are interested in doing and you're not sure what that would look like, um, we would be happy to come alongside you and support you in doing that. It really is a beautiful thing to engage with. And so I would encourage you to either make a plan to celebrate it on your own or with another family or to join one of the two open homes, okay? Ron and I have um, delighted in being able to host that for the last several years, and it is always a, um, a beautiful and a powerful time. And so I um, expect for the spirit to flow in every house that is, that is celebrating Passover this year. And if you would like to be one of those homes, we'd love to help you with that. There will be a women's dinner on May 24th at 6 p.m. in the VCC Fellowship Hall. The cost will be $15 per person. You're going to give that directly to Tina Lippins. Um, as always, when we have events and they're paid events, um, not all of our events are paid events, but some of them are. And so if it's a paid event and cost is an issue, that should not be something that keeps you from attending. If you are feeling the urge to attend, please let us know. For almost every event, we have a specific person who's the contact person. But if not, you can always just let one of the elders know. Um, it's easy to say you shouldn't feel shame about it, and it's harder to actually not feel shame about it. And I get that. Um, but really, we, we say regularly, this is a shame-free house. <laughs> you get to bring your full self here before the Lord, and we love to come alongside of you. And so if it is a pressure for you, even if it wouldn't have been a pressure another month or another year, or if you feel like, oh, that amount is so little, it shouldn't be a problem. If it is a problem, please let us know. Um, we always have people who are giving into supporting others and paying for tickets for other people. Um, we as a church are happy to come alongside of you. Um, we don't reveal your circumstances to other people. We just make sure you're cared for. Okay, so, um, and then if this month and this time you're someone who has abundance and overflow and you would like to buy a ticket for another woman for any of our events when you do that you can always just let us know um, a lot of times Lynn our church secretary is the one collecting money you can always just hand her the money and say this is for two more tickets and she just makes a note of it and has that available good okay along those lines at any point during the service you are welcome to give and you can do that in one of these baskets right up here in front or online um, on our website. Uh, there's a link to Tithely that you can do that. 
if during the worship portion of our service, which who knows might be the entire service, okay, <laughs> we are open to whatever God is doing tonight. Um, I know I'm coming with an expectant heart for whatever he does, and that regardless if that's prophecy and worship the whole time or worship in a sermon, I know that the Lord is going to meet us. But if you have a word from the Lord, which might look like a word of encouragement, um, it might look like an exhortation or a scripture or a prophetic word, please come and see me or Lisa or Alan Casey, and we will release you to the microphone at the appropriate time. Good? And we've been doing so well with this week after week, but remember that God speaks to us through a multitude of voices. And so if you are hearing from the Lord and it's for the house, please do not sit on it. Please come forward and share so we can get you to the microphone. Okay, good. Um, oh, <clears throat> one last thing. In this house, for those of you who do not know, uh, we follow the Hebrew calendar. I mean, in the day-to-day, -day, I'm still doing the Gregorian January, March, April, so I can get to the doctor on time and stuff like that, right? Okay. <laughs> but we do follow along with the Hebrew calendar because these are the months and the times of the year that the Lord set in place throughout the Bible. And so what we've noticed is that for sure, can you be an amazing Christian and follow Jesus and love the Lord without knowing any of this? Absolutely. But the thing that I have noticed is that I have learned, as I've learned more about this and I've learned more about the times and the seasons that the Lord has put in place, um, Chris Armstrong and I were talking about it and we said it's like stepping into a river and you're with the current, right? So it just all of a sudden feels like you're accelerating in a different way than you would be otherwise. You can walk beside the bank or you can jump in. Um, and so we try to give you the tools that you need to jump into this. So Monday night, April 8th at sundown becomes the first of the months in the Hebrew religious cycle of feasts. In early biblical times, this month was known as Aviv, a word now used in Israel for springtime. But since the time of the Babylon Babylonian captivity, the name Nisan has been used. Although the number of the Hebrew year, we're in 5784, began with the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, last fall, the months of the Hebrew calendar begin with this date in the early spring. The Hebraic cycle of feasts begins exactly 14 days before the beginning of Passover. Remember, all 14 speak of deliverance. This signals a spring cleaning time for Israelis who are already busy cleaning, washing, repairing, painting, getting rid of the old, replacing with the new. This year, Aviv continues until sundown, Wednesday, May 8th. So it's going to go from sundown April 8th to sundown May 8th. This month is aligned with the tribe of Judah. It is the first full month of 5784, and things will begin to accelerate this month as we cross over and fully embrace redemption, recovery, and wholeness as heaven connects with earth to cut away the bonds of darkness so you can boldly call your destiny into, into existence. The roar of the Lion of Judah will be released this month. Things which did not move out of the way last season begin to move out of the way this month at the sound of your decree. Amen. Which means you need to make decrees. You need to release something into the atmosphere. As the first month of the Hebrew year, Aviv is our Passover month when we fully cross over into the new year and move forward in this pay era. As you celebrate Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread from April 22nd to April 29th, press through and speak to the narrow places of confinement. Declare your freedom from captivity and allow Holy Spirit to show your next assignment. This is a time to decree, let me go so I may worship. This month you must worship in a new way to get access to the door on the path to your destiny. Aviv is the time when redemptive prophecy begins to manifest, which is especially important in 5784, pay Dalit. As you go stand in the gates this year, use your prophetic words as a sword with authority to open the way to your destiny. The things of your prophetic words, which did not occur last season, decree they start manifesting this month. Remind all creation what God has spoken and is saying to you. Aviv is also the time of annual renewal of God's creative power so you can advance. It is spring. We can, we can say that by faith in Rochester, we're stepping in, but it is spring. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Aviv is actually the stage of growth of grain when the seeds have reached full size. Learn how to pray over your seed. Aviv is the time for you to decree your future and to see the beginning of your first fruits harvest. This begins a new season of increase for you. Take away any form of murmuring or complaining. I'm just going to say that one more time. Take away any form of murmuring or complaining and speak to every seed you sow. Aviv is the time when kings go to war, so be sure you are where you are called to be when Holy Spirit directs you to be there. 
Aviv is connected to the Hebrew letter He, which pictures wind, breath, and praise. He is the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet and is associated with our power of being, the ability of self-expression. Five is associated with grace. Your speech provides the ability to express your deepest feelings and insights. This month in this pay year, be you, mm, this month in this pay year, be sure your words are always surrounded with thanksgiving for the grace and mercy extended to us. Let your words decree and release life. Please stand up. About an hour ago, Iran launched drones against Israel. <clears throat> Father, we decree you are the protector of Israel. Amen. You are the one who stretched forth your mighty right arm and brought them out of Egypt. You are the one who protected them from Assyria. You are the one who protected them from Babylon. You are the one who will protect them from every enemy who tries to thwart your redemptive purpose for Israel. Lord, we say even now, be a hedge of protection around them. We say, Lord, activate the angels which you created to protect Israel and no weapon formed against them will prosper. We say, Lord, you are the Lord of heaven and earth's armies, and we command the armies of the earth now to come into alignment with your word. Lord, we say, you are the one who knows the end from the beginning of this matter, and we call for the Prince of Peace now, the King of Glory, to enter into this battle on behalf of the sons and daughters of Abraham whether they be Arab or whether they be Israeli, Lord, we say protect and keep them. Yes. Lord, we say let your name be glorified and let the nations of the earth choose this day to align with you. For you said everyone who will align with Israel, you will bless. And Lord, we say let your blessing be upon them. And Lord, let the retaliation not take innocent lives. Protect the innocent men, women, and children in both of these nations, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the believers in Iran. We thank you, Lord, there are more believers in Iran per, per capita than any other nation on earth. And we say, Lord, let the pressure of this battle now bring a harvest for your glory out of Iran, out of Iraq, out of Syria, out of Israel, out of Egypt, and out of every nation of the earth. Lord, as we worship you tonight, we ask you to release the angels to war and bring your purpose to path in the earth realm. In Jesus' name. Release your powers. Release your power, Lord. Release your power. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh. Protect Israel, protect your people, Lord. Lift your voices to our God. Lift your voices to our God. Lift your voices, lift your voices. our voices, we war with decrees, we war with love, are you ready for war, are you ready 
Your face. 
As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on us, come down, Spirit. Feel the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you feel me. Calm down, spirit. When you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room.
encourage you with a scripture that goes along with this song Jesus said to them suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and you say friend lend me three loaves of bread a friend of mine is on a journey and has come to me and I have no food to offer him and suppose the one inside answers don't bother me the door is already locked and my children and I are in bed I can't get up and give you anything I tell you even though he will not get up 
and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I was listening to the flags as Valerie was flagging and worshiping. And we expect Holy Spirit that... For me, the white is the color of the kingdom of God because it contains all of the colors. And we expect Holy Spirit to just come down and be real quiet. Yeah. And sometimes He is, but not tonight. Tonight He had a lot to say and He was hollering. And there are times when He hollers and, and moves and shifts the atmosphere. And we can ask him to shift the atmosphere. There are times when he will say, command the heavens to crack open. And you, you can hear it in the flags. You can hear it in the voices. You can hear it in worship. So listen, not just to flags, but to Holy Spirit. Listen to what he's saying, not just the still, small, quiet voice. He's always there, but in the loud voice that he has to say to move the heavens. And we say, let it move on behalf of Israel. Have you had enough? No. How full are you? He will give you as much as you ask for. That's what Emily just read to us. Are you thirsty for more of Him? You're awfully quiet. Are you crying out to Him? What are you asking Him? More and more. Are you satisfied with yesterday's portion? No. Your manna that you hold on to, the memory is good, but there's so much more. Tonight, he wants to fill you with measures you have not experienced before. The picture that was alluded to of we can either get in the river or we can run along the bank. He wants you to get off the bank tonight. In other words, don't hang on to the side of the pool anymore. Let him take you under. You won't drown because he will reform you in his glory. Where are my seekers? I long for you, seeker. Where are my seekers? I long for you. For you, where are my seekers? Where are my seekers? Where are my seekers? I will reward. 
I will reward. I will reward. I will reward. I will reward. I will reward. I will reward. I will reward. I will reward. Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember how to seek me? Do you remember? In spirit and in truth, I will reward. I will reward. I will reward. I will reward. All of my seekers. Hallelujah. Says I will reward. I will reward. I will reward. I will reward. I will reward all of my seekers. So we're going to do this again. This is the Lord singing over us. Our response when He says, I will reward, our response is, You will reward your seekers. Let's enter into this and ask him as you're singing to him to fill you with measures you haven't been filled before. Oh Lord, you will reward. You will reward. You will reward. All of your seekers. I will reward. You will reward. I will reward. You will reward. I will reward. You will reward. All of my seekers. I will reward. You will reward. I will reward. You will reward. I will reward. You will
Seat me with all your heart I miss all your heart Oh, you are, you are my priest I call you king and queen I've appointed you to stand before me I want to hear from thee I want to hear you In spirit and in truth I will reward Oh, I will reward I will reward I give him my spirit If you want me, I will reward He will reward those who seek him. The baptizer is here in the room. His eyes are ablaze with fire. And he longs to baptize us afresh in fresh measures of his spirit and fire. Casey was reminded of a time when Eldon Wilson stayed with us. And he gave a teaching that night after we told him he could go to any room in the house he wanted. And he said, have you ever, in his teaching, invited a guest to go anywhere they wanted in your house? except that door, or that door, or that door. Tonight the Lord wants every door of your heart, every room, the one that you said, oh, that's too deep and dark, I can't possibly give it to you. He took the cross for that room. The one that's got a big S on it for shame, he bought that room. The one that's got a huge P on it for pride. He bought that room. Every room in your heart, he wants to fill with measures unexplainable, unmeasurable, unfathomable. He has deep, deep measures of his love to pour into your life tonight whether you want to do it in the place you're at and bump into the chair in front of you that's fine the word needs to be responded to step into the river Keziah's dancing in the river 
We're going to get back to being filled in a minute. During pre-service today, we were singing about God rending the heavens and come down, and it was great, and there was a scripture that went with it, and I got back to my seat, and the Lord said, I want to rend your heart. I want to rend your heart. And he led me to this scripture. It says, rend your hearts and not your garments. Don't make a play act of it. Let him rend your heart. And I had to look up rend and it means rip in two. Let him rip your heart in two. Rend your hearts and not your garments and return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. And he revokes his sentence of evil against you. Who knows? But he will turn and revoke the sentence of evil and he will leave a blessing behind and give you the means to serve him. He wants to rend your heart, break your heart open, call you to repentance so that he can revoke every evil thing against you and then give you the means to serve him. Just so you know, what we have going on up here, when Myra came forward and sang and Ethan was with her, um, we had a, another little person over here, the kids in the back, when we say, train up a child in the way you should go, when we say there's no junior Holy Spirit, these kinds of things that we repeat over and over again, this is what we need. Your kids are welcome to enter in, even if it's messy, even if it looks a little weird, this is beautiful, this is fine. Okay, so parents just like, if your kids have a word, bring them forward. If your kids wanna dance, it's okay. Let them jump into the river and jump with them.
the heavens and come down, Lord. Bring the heavens and come down. Bring the heavens and come down. Oh, come down.
as I hear the drum playing, um, I was looking up this morning about avalanches, and I was like, God, how do you know when avalanche is going to come? So I, I looked it up, but it said that there's a sound called womping, and it sounds like a drum. And so I just feel like God is still doing something, and He wants to come even more in power and in glory, and the sound of the drum is telling me it's coming. So, Jesus emptied himself completely and went to the cross. In a few minutes, we're going to take communion, but not until we womp. Holy Spirit is doing something in every heart, whether you know it or not. As the drums play over us, give him the key to the closets in your heart. You're the only one that can keep the door from being opened. Let me tell you, what you have locked in there is worthless. And what he wants to exchange for it is precious. Prophets prophesy based on sound. That's why David made so many different instruments. So there would be a fresh sound that would confuse his enemies. Because when we get into our religious cycles, the enemy has us trapped in that room in our heart we never gave to the Lord. There's a little child in one of your hearts, maybe in several, but I see it in one of your hearts. The little child is beginning to dance because they were never allowed to dance. And it's a happy dance. It's a dance of freedom. It's a dance of affirmation in the presence of the love flowing out of Father's eyes to the little child in your heart. Let me tell you, your enemy hates what's going on behind me. Because it's the generation after the generation after my generation that's doing what our generation should be doing. If you're joining us online, get your communion elements ready. If you're serving in the house, come up, but we're not quite there yet.
heaven is a dance. The first two chambers of your heart are the garden, the place where you meet him. The second chamber is the dance floor, the place where you allow him to romance you. Tonight as you take communion, you're going to experience two keys. The first key unlocks the door to your heart. You should leave it up front when you take the elements. The second key we're going to talk about when we have the elements. Unlock the chambers of your heart tonight. Some of you haven't really let him in other than to say, you're my salvation. But tonight he wants to be Lord of all. He wants the secret places in the garden so he can meet with you in the cool of the evening, in the heat of the day, and in the stillness of the night. As you come forward tonight, only you can unlock the doors in your heart. Unlock them. And do a prophetic act before you take the element. Drop the key up here. Tiffany will release you from the back. Mountain 
Lord, we take the key that we've been holding on to and we unlock our heart. I don't know which way you turn. My, my locks are backwards at home. Unlock the lock to your heart and throw away the key. So um, for many of you have seen me wrestling over here with Ethan, and you may know that he really um, gets excited about microphones, and I was like nervous while we were up here, but I felt the Lord say that um, we think it's going to be worse than it actually is when we let go, when we open up, and we let whatever that is just run free. We think it's going to be worse than what it is, but there's actually so much breakthrough when you open your heart and let the Lord do what he wants to do. Don't hold back. Don't keep that to yourself. Let the Lord have it because there's more breakthrough coming. And tonight, Lord, we remember Israel. We unlock the false thinking of our mind. And we give you the key. Father, you have never failed Abraham and you won't start tonight. Let the Lord heal your mind. In Hebraic thinking, your mind and your heart are connected. They form your conscience. Scripture speaks about having a clear conscience. Only the blood of Yeshua can cleanse your conscience. Yeshua, you gave it all. You laid everything down before you came to earth. And then you laid everything down when you met the boys in the Garden of Gethsemane. And when they laid down under the burden of the world, you carried the burden of the world before Father's throne. And your mind was cleansed. Tonight, Lord, we remember in your broken body the cleansing of our mind so we can have the mind of Christ in immeasurable measure, infinitely increasing every time we ask you for more. As we participate in remembering your broken body tonight, Lord, we say thank you for unlocking the chamber in our heart with our mind. Lord, as you bled from Gethsemane to the scourging post to the cross, you taught us how to think as heaven thinks, not my will, but yours. Jesus, tonight, we give you the keys to our heart and we ask you to unlock the garden and the dance floor. 
in the place where we write our covenant vows in the chamber where we join with you in the hoopah of covenant. Our hearts tonight remember the victory of your blood which broke every curse we brought on ourselves, or the enemy tried to make us take hold of. Tonight, Lord, open our hearts to know you more. If you are offended, just remember Jesus said offenses must come. I had the joy just now of watching four generations take communion over here. How many of you have had enough? How many of you want more? And the rest of you are just, eh. He has more for us tonight. There is an infilling that is flowing out of the throne room right now. If you have not read Ezekiel 44.4, if you're into fours, read Ezekiel 44.4. Because the glory of the Lord is flowing in this house tonight. It's flowing from the throne in heaven through each heart that yielded itself to be peculiar. Maybe that's why Peter said we're a peculiar people. Because we will lay down pride, arrogance, and take up the mantle of humility and do whatever the Lord asks us to do. Yeshua is here tonight. After he rose from the dead, he breathed on his disciples. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. That was their salvation. They were not content. Because he told them 40 days after, he was going to heaven, wait on him. And so for 10 more days, they waited on him. And guess what? It was Pentecost. And Holy Spirit came up, poured out, and changed the earth as we know it. That's what he wants to do with you tonight. How many of you want to be earth changers? my generation. Oh, there's the next generation. There's the next generation. Because he wants you to be kingdom ambassadors, which means we don't have a life. His life is our life. When he tells you at two o'clock in the morning to get up and call Al, I don't sleep with my cell phone. Because some people just do that. Do what he tells you to do. As peculiar as it may look. We're not going anywhere. Yet. Before or after. Before. Okay, come here. 
You know, you all have a voice in what Holy Spirit is doing. Valerie said something earlier when she was welcoming everyone. And those of you who don't like to get here when she welcomes us, you, you get to hear me put my spin on it. There are times when the children need to prophesy like they did up here tonight. And occasionally they will have the interpretation like they did last week. But there are times when the Lord puts a word on your heart and you sit there like, And he's told me I have the fourth word. The first word comes. The second word comes. No third word. You know what that means? I'm mature enough to know if there's no third word, there's no fourth word. And if he told you you had the fifth word, there's no fifth word. Shyness masks boldness shyness if it's a character trait is one thing but if it holds you back from doing what the Lord tells you it's a sin to know what is right and not do it the scripture says is sin I'm glad someone here knows the scripture and so when he gives you something to share if he tells you to go share it personally with a person go share it personally with a person it's not going to upset Jesus. It may offend someone's religious spirit, but as you know, if you've been here more than three times, the religious spirit is not welcome in our gatherings. So, I hear there's an exhortation we need to hear before we get immersed again. Good evening, everybody. Um, I just wanted to encourage us actually to reach specifically. I just kept hearing over and over and over again, the song of the Lord, the song of the Lord, the song of the Lord, the song of the Lord. And at one moment up there, I was like, okay, Lord, I'm not supposed to sing another song because there's a song that's supposed to be released. And I was just kind of scanning the room. I was looking at my brother. I was looking at various sisters in, my, in the faith, just people that I know that sing. I was looking around. I was like, Lord, what is it? Am, am I waiting for the song of the Lord? And I, I really believe that the song song of the Lord is to come from all of us. The Lord has a song that he is going to sing over the world through his people. And I don't know what that looks like. I'm not even sure what I'm actually prompting you to reach for, but I will say in your prayer time, and if we get a moment during the duration of the service, I'm not sure what the rest of the words are going to be that follow, but we need to reach for this artistic expression, this song of the Lord. I don't like to look at my phone during service, but the last six weeks I've learned we better look at our phone. This is from an 11 year old who's watching online. And oh, by the way, someone came up a couple days over 11 who was watching online and said, I need to be there tonight and they're here now. They took communion with us. <laughs> Will you be obedient to what the Lord tells you to do? So an 11 year old sent this. God wants us to jump into his fire and not be afraid to jump into his fire and there's a big flame after it. I'm glad the generation after the generation is hearing what Holy Spirit is doing. I need to just check to see if there's anything else. So I guess we have to charge our phones before we come to church because we are a mobile church. How many of you are ready to get back in the river? <laughs> Can I have some river? The bass makes the sound. We need fire. Do you know the river of the Lord is on fire? 
it's burning. The base will take you down to the depths that you are afraid to go in. Most of us want to be ankle deep. And some of us that are over 40 say, well, maybe I'll go in knee deep. Some people just said, no, I'm going in up to my loins, but when you read the description in the book of Ezekiel of the river, the river that is over their heads, and that's where we're going, said it is a raging winter torrent. So you remember all the rain we just got and all the snow that just melted? That's what it's a depiction of, and the river can't be stopped. This is what Holy Spirit's inviting you into tonight. The river of his presence where I cannot exist anymore. And Yeshua, Hamashiach, Christ in you, the hope of glory can be fully exposed through you. If you're ready to get in and ride with him, stand up. Yes. You don't have to stand. But let me tell you, you are going to miss the most exciting adventure of your life. Holy Spirit, your sons and daughters no longer want to be babes, infants, or teenagers. They want to be weos, mature sons and daughters of the Most High. Take our hearts tonight and immerse us in your glory. Baptize us afresh. Boriakaha shikiero koromata te visiko. Rina te kande de go kuriana sa pahari kita tarabatati. Kuriana namashe se kututorialasa. Mokarianda sikia tumbu oshite. Mokorobotande bekisese. Makarinda sakanda kaande ushanda. I know someone here besides me has the interpretation. Get deep in the river. Don't be satisfied with just the top. He wants to pour out so we're overflowing. Expect to get your shoes wet. Plan on getting your neighbor's shoes wet. Because we're called to carry his presence, carry his spirit, and pour out of overflowing that we can't contain him and that he will, wherever we walk, we take a kingdom for him because we're pouring out. We can't contain him anymore. We're to have an overflowing expectation so that wherever I go, I'm slapping on the person next to me. And the Lord says, you have limited me in the past, but I will no longer allow you to limit the measure of my presence flowing through you. For in days gone by, you've said, that's enough, Lord, no more. But I'm going to put a song in your heart that says, more, Lord, more, Lord, give me more. And when you sing the song to me in the secret place, I will fill you up with glory to go pour out in the public place. I will send you places where you have been embarrassed before, but no longer will you be embarrassed to speak on my behalf. For I will give you an anointing. I will even give you the gifts of my spirit and wisdom and knowledge and discernment where you can go to the place I send you and release what I gave you in your secret place. No longer will you put a cap on me, for I am removing the cap off of you tonight, says the Lord. Let Holy Spirit take you deeper in the sounds.
Let the high cymbals sing. Don't stop. Lord, I say, give my brothers and sisters the ability to see the angelic realm around them dancing. Open the eyes of their heart to see from your perspective. Open the ears of their heart to hear from your perspective. Lord Jesus, touch us with the fire of your fingers once again. you just heard he's giving you a healing anointing I see his hands touching his fingers touching your hands it's not the one with your hands in your pockets don't worry it's not you he is imparting gifts by his spirit He's giving you the words to speak healing over lung disease. Father, I say, let them hear your voice so clearly that in the midst of the marketplace, just as you did with Yeshua, your sons and daughters will hear your voice and speak your healing grace to the afflicted and the infirm. I'm going to release the word, you can claim it, I will tell the person afterwards who it's for. I saw you in the days of your youth when you said yes to me. But the concerns of the world and the issues of your family caused you to shut off the flow of my spirit. But tonight I am removing the plug because you unlocked the door and asked me to come in. And I will amplify the wave of my presence in your heart and in your mind every time you ask me for more. I long to see your eyes and to look deep into your soul and tell you how much I love you. I'm going to receive that for me, but I'm going to tell the person who he spoke it to.
They crossed at Baal Zephon, the God of the world who wants to steal your voice. So we're going to do a prophetic act. You can join us if you want, or you can stay in your seat. But we're going to go through the Red Sea, put our foot on this serpent that's trying to steal our voice, and we're going to walk toward the fire. So you go up there with the fire. Kids, back up. So you've got the rhythm. You can dance like Ethan is. But come through the river and get baptized in fire. That's what we're going to impart when you come through. So you guys got to go back. We 
song, the song of the Lord. Song, release the 
everywhere we go to allow your song to come back to you. Thank you for putting your dance in our step. Thank you for showing us through the children how to rejoice in your presence. I send you to carry his presence and release it into the marketplace, to release it into the halls of education, to release it wherever Father calls you this week. I send you to prosper and be in health because the one who heals is healing through you. We love you all. Have a blessed week.